Um, I would simply observe that, uh, uh, to his credit, Mr. Jordan has been second to none in asking uh, for um, um, access to the uh, materials we're asking for. For the, uh, and I simply ask him: Does he still think we ought to? Is he still supporting his own request for? Uh, uh, that the committee and the Congress be given access to the entire report and uh, the underlying information. Consistent with the law, and I would ask the chairman, my understanding is Mr. Mueller is going to be here next week. Why are we doing it? You're going to get to ask the guy who wrote the whole darn document. We're all going to get asked him questions. Why don't you hold off on this contempt until at least the guy who wrote the thing spent 22 months and $35 million with a whole bunch of Democrat lawyers putting it together. Why don't you wait and ask him next week before we do this contempt resolution? I'll answer, well, essentially because it would be useful to read the material before we have him in front of us. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Glad, glad to see that the microphone's working this week. My good friend from Georgia just asked the operative question, how can we impeach if we don't get the documents? How can we impeach if we don't get the documents? Ladies and gentlemen, this hearing is not about the Attorney General. It's not about the Mueller report, 92% of which Everyone in America has had the opportunity to read. It's not about the fact that even the portions that the American people haven't been able to read, the chairman's been able to go read had he chosen. This is all about impeaching the president. Now, why don't they just say it? Why don't they just jump to the impeachment proceedings like their liberal media overlords are telling them to do? Well, the reason is that the American people don't support impeachment. And it's easy to understand why. They actually went and elected Donald Trump, president of the United States. And I don't think people are going to support impeaching a president who's doing so well. I mean, you got 3.2% growth in the economy. The Trump economy is hot. And the reason we're doing so well is as a consequence of the president's policies. And so at a time when my Democrat colleagues are focused on the next election and not solutions to the problems facing Americans, they can't attack the president's policies because people are doing well. So typically they roll next to identity politics that based on what you look like, who you pray to or who you love, you can't possibly support Republicans. But African Americans are doing better. Hispanics are doing better. Women are doing better. We are seeing a rising tide that is truly lifting all boats in this country. And so now we have this effort not to argue with policies, not to typically go to the identity politics that functions as the organizing principle of today's Democratic Party. They have to delegitimize the guy that the won, delegitimize the guy that people voted for, but they don't have the guts to do it directly, and so they're going after the Attorney General. Now, the gentleman from Georgia in his last remark said, we are hiding behind the rules. Hiding behind the rules. These are federal laws that dictate what the Attorney General can and cannot do. We're not hiding behind the rules. We just like to follow them. By the way, it's not following the rules that got us in this trouble in the first place. When the inspector general testified before us, he said it's the fundamental fact that during the investigations of Hillary Clinton and Donald Trump, you saw continuous examples of a one-off here, a violation of protocol there. The inspector general said never before had he seen a circumstance where the very same team that was investigating Hillary Clinton would then go and investigate the other person that was involved in the 2016 presidential contest. About a month ago, in this committee, I laid out the stages of grief, denial, anger, bargaining, depression, and acceptance. And I think that folks watching at home can probably follow along and see where we're headed. First, my Democratic colleagues were in denial. When they saw that there was no collusion after saying for 22 months that the president was an agent of the Russian government, after saying for 22 months that there was actual evidence of collusion, they were in denial when they saw the conclusion that there wasn't. Then there was anger. It had to be the attorney general's fault. Mueller didn't make a decision on obstruction. Somebody had to. The attorney general did. So they got down at him and with this whole kerfluffle of anger. Well, now we know the third step, bargaining. Well, Mr. Attorney General, you've given us 92% of the Mueller report, but we have to bargain for the remaining 8% because that's really where we think the action is. Well, Mr. Attorney General, you spent five hours before the Senate Judiciary Committee. Three of our presidential candidates got to question you. You offered to come before the House Judiciary Committee. You offered to come for an additional hour of questioning. But we have to bargain so that our staff lawyers can ask you questions. Now, I don't think it's a good sign that the next sign after bargaining is depression. 
So I, I feel for my Democrat colleagues, but after that we get to acceptance, and that's sure something that I'm looking forward to, because there are some really good ideas that my Democratic colleagues have once they kind of get to acceptance on the no Russia collusion thing. My, my friend, the gentleman from Rhode Island, has excellent ideas about how to change the way that consumers interface with big tech companies. My, my colleague from the state of New York is right, that if the First Step Act is the only step act, then there's, then that would be a bad thing. We need to do more on criminal justice reform. My, my colleague uh, who's not with us from California, Mr. Swalwell, he's got great ideas to unlock potential cures with medical cannabis reform, but we're not doing any of those things. And by the way, I bet a bunch of my friends on the other side of the aisle low-key wish that their actual bills that would impact the lives of Americans would get heard instead of this garbage. The Obama administration ran an intel operation against the Trump campaign. Peter Strzok opened it up, the dossier kept it going, and now the Democrats need to get over it. I yield back. Bill Barr is following the law, and what's his reward? Democrats are going to hold him in contempt. I don't, think I don't think today is actually about getting information. I don't think it's about getting the unredacted Mueller report. I don't think last week's hearing was actually about having staff question the Attorney General. I think it's, as my colleague said earlier, I think it's all about trying to destroy Bill Barr because Democrats are nervous he's going to get to the bottom of everything. He's going to find out how and why this investigation started in the first place. Never forget what Bill Barr said a few weeks ago, three and a half weeks ago, when he testified in front of the Senate Finance Committee. He said a lot of important things, but he said three, excuse me, four very interesting things. First, he said there was a failure of leadership at the upper echelon, term he used, upper echelon of the FBI. We all know that's the case. Director Comey's been fired. Deputy Director McCabe fired, lied three times under oath, according to the Inspector General. FBI Counsel Jim Baker demoted and left, currently under investigation by the Justice Department. Lisa Page demoted and left. Peter Strzok, Deputy Head of Counterintelligence, demoted and fired. Peter Strzok, the guy who ran the Clinton investigation and the Russian investigation. There was certainly a failure of leadership at the upper echelon of the FBI. Second thing the Attorney General said three and a half weeks ago in front of the Senate Finance Committee. Spying did occur. Said it twice. Yes, spying did occur. Third, he said, there's a basis for my concern about the spying that took place. And maybe the most interesting thing, two terms he used that frankly I find frightening. He said there was, in his judgment, he thinks there may have been unauthorized surveillance and political surveillance. Scary terms. We got to go back to January 3rd, 2017. Senator Schumer on the Rachel Maddow show talking about then President elect Trump says this. If you take on the intelligence community, they have six ways from Sunday at getting back at you. Now, I don't know if the FBI went after President Trump in six ways, but I sure know they went after him in two ways. And the first one is the now famous dossier on October 21st, 2016. The FBI used one party's opposition research document as the basis to go to a secret court to get a warrant to spy on the other party's campaign. That happened. Democrat National Committee, the Clinton campaign, paid Perkins Coie Law Firm, who hired Fusion GPS, who then hired a foreigner, Christopher Steele, who did what? Talked to Russians and put together this salacious, unverified document that became the basis to get a warrant to spy on the Trump campaign. They did it. And when they went to the court, they didn't tell them important things like who paid for it. They didn't tell them that Christopher Steele had already told the FBI and the Justice Department that he was, quote, desperate to stop Trump. And they didn't tell the court that Christopher Steele had been fired by the FBI because he's out talking to the press. They did that. And second, just last Thursday, just last Thursday, New York Times story, FBI sent investigator posing as an assistant to meet with the Trump aide in 2016. FBI sent someone in, pretending to be somebody else, to talk with George Papadopoulos, who was with the Trump campaign. You know what they call that? You know what they call that? It's called spying. They did it. They did it. They did it twice, and who knows how much more. And what I know is Bill Barr has said he's going to get to the bottom of it. And think about the term he used again. This is important. Political surveillance the in the United States of America. I will not yield. Think about that term. He's going to get to the, he said he's going to put a team together, going to investigate all this. This is critical. And never forget the guy who ran this investigation, Peter Strzok. 
ran the Clinton investigation, and then launched and ran the Trump-Russia investigation. Never forget what he said. Trump should lose 100 million to zero. We need an insurance policy. Told Lisa Page, don't worry, Lisa, we'll stop Trump. This is what Bill Barr wants to investigate. And as, other, as my colleagues have said, this is the House Judiciary Committee with the history this committee has in protecting fundamental liberties and protecting the Constitution. Last week, there was another important document. Document Emmett Flood sent to the Attorney General. I just want to read a couple sentences. Under our system of government, unelected executive branch officers and intelligence agency personnel are supposed to answer to the person elected by the people, the president, and not the other way around. This is not a Democrat or Republican issue. It's a matter of having a government responsible to the people, to we the people. In, a partisan, in the partisan commotion surrounding the Mueller report, it would be well to remember that what can be done to a president can be done to any of us. And this committee is supposed to look out for that fundamental fact more than anything else. And we are not doing that today. I yield back.